Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're taking a look at the Fairphone 4. This test unit has kindly been provided to me by Marina, who is a company that is selling a range of Android smartphones that are using their EOS, which means completely removed all Google services, all Google, de-Googled as they call it. And uh, that's gonna be quite an interesting one. But today we are taking a look specifically at the Fairphone itself. Not so much worried about the operating system. One of the great things of the Fairphone is the fact that you can freely flash different operating systems. So let's get into it, let's unbox it and let's check out what we have in here. Okay, so let's take a look at the Fairphone 4. As previously mentioned, this is a test device from Marina and it's running their EOS, which we will take a look at in great detail in another video. But today we're gonna see what you get in the box with a Fairphone 4, exactly the same whether or not it's a Marina version or a normal one. So first off, it's worth noting that all the ink is soy ink, it's all cardboard packaging, it's nice. It's it's kind of a nice uh, rustic feel to it. Uh, and like it says, flashed with EOS as well. So we can open up and I actually quite like this kind of concertina effect that we're getting here with all the different information, modular design, extended warranties, easy to repair, long life software support. And obviously the device itself is also made from lots of recycled materials and, and all that sort of really good stuff. And then the only thing really in the box is the phone itself, but we will just put that to side for a second and see if we get anything else. Um, again, all cardboard packaging, a couple of uh, Marina stickers, which is quite cool. Um, I like those, always like a good sticker. Some quick start guides and gump, and then a thing about Marina as well and kind of all the details there. But we, like I say, we'll be getting into a lot more detail on that later in another video. So let's pop that all back in there. And obviously the main thing that we are interested in is the phone itself. So let's take a look. Uh, it comes in this nice little paper sleeve to protect it. And here we go, here is the Fairphone 4. So let's get this all out of the way. It's worth noting, of course, that you don't actually get even a USB-C cable. There's nothing else in the box. Uh, when you buy the phone from the uh, Fairphone website, you can choose to add a USB uh, cable or a charging brick or any of those accessories that you might need, but they don't include them as standard under the idea that obviously most people have them already from previous phones and other devices. So I can understand the sentiment. It definitely helps keep costs down and also helps keep e-waste down. So here we have the Fairphone 4 6 gigabyte RAM version with 128 gig internal storage. It has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G, uh, full HD 6.3 inch screen, uh, dual cameras on the back as well, which we will have a look at later. Uh, you can still buy this phone today. They have the Fairphone 5 as well, but this is the, the 4 and it kind of only really costs £449 on the Fairphone website. So it's definitely pricing itself as kind of the higher mid-end, I would say. Let's see if it holds up to that. Now, of course, you can choose whether or not it comes with uh, normal Google Android. It would come with Android 13, uh, but in this instance, we are using EOS instead, which basically means there's no Google services on it which is kind of definitely gonna be interesting to explore in its own right. But let's have a look at the phone itself. So like I say it's quite standard slab of black on the front, uh, very Black Mirror-esque. I will say it's quite thick. It's definitely thicker than my S23 Ultra. And that in itself was quite a big phone. It's definitely quite heavy as well. I'm not sure the exact weight, um, but she chunky. Yeah. And I guess, you know, a lot of that is just to allow for that modular repairability, which we will get into in a while. But overall, it's not a bad looking phone. We've got this kind of gray back plate, the two cameras, uh, flash, 
yeah, on the sides, two buttons, the power button, which is also a fingerprint scanner. On the bottom, you've got the USB-C port, speaker port, and a microphone, another microphone. This is how you take the back of the case off. We'll have a look at that in a second. Another microphone. And that's about it, really. No, you, no audio jack, but let's be honest, audio jacks are kind of dead at this point, that's for sure. Um, and nothing really else to speak of, other than, of course, it's party trick, which is that you can definitely take the back off. So let's get the back off and have a look inside. Editor Zachary here, just stopping in to say, if you've got this far into the video and you're really enjoying it, please do hit that subscribe button. Only 0.7% of people that watch my content are subscribed. And I'm still an absolutely tiny channel. At the current recording and editing this video, I have 444 subscribers. It's a nice number, but I'd like it to be higher. Please join me and help me get to that thousand subscriber goal. I would love for you to be along on the ride. We have lots of cool content coming up. Thank you. Anyway, back to the video. And here you go with the back off, you have full access to the battery and other components in the device. Now I had to go and get my old HTC Desire because I think actually a lot of people won't even realize that this is how phones used to be. That you used to be able to just take the back off, have full access to the battery. It's where you'd put your SIM card, your SD card and all that sort of stuff. So definitely a callback to the old way of doing things. But what that does mean is yeah, everything is repairable. You can take the battery out. You can replace the battery, no problem. You've got a SIM card, micro SD card slot as well, which is great. So even though there is only 128 gig storage, it's fully expandable. And these other components also can come out with just removing the screws. We will do a full teardown. So look out for that video as well. But yeah, it's, it's kind of a nice callback to old, devices. Now, of course, there are downsides to this. There's no wireless charging, for one, and obviously there's no proper waterproof either. It's rated IP54, so you're not going to be able to dunk this properly in water. You're not going to be able to get it really wet like you can with a lot of modern smartphones, because it's not a sealed unit. You can definitely tra have that trade-off with the modular design. Okay, so next up, let's get my SIM card in here and let's get this booted. We would say I am doing a separate video of the actual operating system, but I want to take out, check out the cameras and also just see how well this fingerprint scanner works. Sometimes they can be quite hit and miss. So let's check those out and let's take a look at the cameras as well and uh, see how they fare. Now the phone is booted up, we can kind of have a look at the screen. It's not bad. It's not a bad panel. I have noticed that, especially if you open up a strong white background, there's some kind of blurring, darkening around the top of the screen. Not sure the camera's picking that up. That could just be this test unit, but it's definitely not an even brightness across the whole screen. Other than that, it's perfectly responsive. It's completely usable. Um, I would have no problem with this whatsoever. Having a look at the fingerprint scanner, well, that seems to do a pretty good job too. By the time you touch it, and it just unlocks, you don't actually even have to press the button, you can just put your finger on it, and it unlocks. I quite like that animation as well that EOS has, where it kind of blurs in, um, just to make sure that, you know, see, when I use a different finger, it's not lurking, it's not doing anything, and in fact, if I then click the button, overall, very happy with my initial impressions of the Fairphone. Let's take a look at the camera quality. And this is the front facing camera quality. Uh, doing a little bit of a selfie. Yeah. It's not too bad, actually. Uh. And this is the wide angle lens. Not the best, actually, both this and the selfie video look much better on the phone screen, but now it's up on the big screen. It's not great. Image stabilization isn't great either. This is our like 1X normal lens. I'm just panning down and it's wobbling all over the place. It's worth noting, of course, here that the version that I have doesn't really probably have any AI or any third party stuff going on to stabilize it because this is the EOS version. The standard Fairphone might be better. So in terms of photos, this is a photo of the uh, normal back camera, the 1x zoom. 
it's okay. It's not handling the light level so great. It's a bit washed out. I'm I'm not a camera expert, but the colors aren't great as far as I can tell. And then the selfie, you know, it's a bog standard selfie camera. It's kind of fine. This is definitely not a photography phone. It's serviceable, but nothing special. So there we have it. There is a quick look at the Fairphone 4. It's a device that I really like. I have to admit, it stands for a lot of really good things. It's great to see a company trying to build something that's more ethically sourced, but also repairable. This is this is a smartphone that really feels like you actually own it. You have the right to do what you want with your hardware. And you don't see that very often anymore. Now, on the downside, of course, for the spec that you're getting in the Fairphone 4, it's not really worth the money. I think for the average person that's looking to just get a mid-range Android smartphone, this isn't going to be it. This is more expensive, heavier, thicker uh, than other devices on the market. But if you were trying to really be conscious about your impact on the world, this is a great way to go forward and still be connected. Uh, so yeah, I think this is very a very interesting device and a very interesting concept. I'm looking forward to taking a look at the Fairphone 5, which is their latest model. And they're currently selling both, I guess, offering the 4 as a, a lower range device, and the 5 is kind of their flagship. So it'll be interesting to check out the differences there. But again, I have to say thank you very much to Marina for supplying this device for me to test. If you are interested in Android phones that don't have Google services, that keep your privacy 100%, all your data, all your hardware, all that kind of stuff, do go check them out. I do have an affiliate link down below. Uh, this video isn't sponsored. They've literally just sent the device so I could test it out. I have to send it back. Um, but I will get a little bit of a kickback for anyone that does use my affiliate link. So please do go check that out. Thank you very much for watching. We'll have a few more device uh, videos on this device and the uh, and Fairphone 5 as well. We're going to have a teardown. We're going to also look much deeper into EOS and what you can actually do with it. And I'm also going to do a bit of a uh, trial, actually use this as my main device for, for a week and see what my experience is like as well. So some real world experience coming soon as well. So do make sure to hit that subscribe button if this is the kind of content that you're interested in and you wanna see what Android is like without Google. It's definitely gonna be very interesting. There's some really cool stuff I've already seen. Uh, some stuff that might be a bit more of an issue as well. So let's make sure to be subscribed, ready for those videos. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.